Okay, so we've finished our color type. Now we have our, our most finished spot illustration. And now I'm playing with different background elements. I downloaded some. And then to customize, just like we've learned in compositing, I can blend them with each other. And I'm just using a straight opacity. So that the combination is stronger than the two together. Then I might do things like just flip them. So I don't like the dark shadow there. Let's try it flipped onto the other side. Because I, I want that G to be a little bit more readable and no. Uh, maybe. <laughs> it's hard to know. Maybe I do like it flipped. Now our eye generally reads space. This is just 2D design. Uh, it usually leaves any, any artwork out the bottom right. You know, we kind of, in the West, we read an image like we would read a, a page from a book. So having it darker there kind of makes it a faster read flipping it kind of slows down the read of the image a little bit both of which can be useful but if i want to actually alter i'm going to have to rasterize and then if i rasterize i'm going to make a duplicate and then i'm going to try dodging and burning that so just like when we were compositing Make it super big, super soft. Just lighten these midtones a little bit on this background layer. Now, this is still at uh, 350 pixels per inch at 9 by 12. And I can do this with levels too, but it's nice to kind of alter it by hand, right? It's hand adjusting the stains on the paper. And that helps the G to stand out because it gives some, some space for the drop shadow to, to make a difference. And the, the tone of the paper kind of matches the tones within the type, which I like. Now, with the background being a little bit darker at the edges than it is in the center, that's called vignetting. So that's pretty common. And brighten it up a little bit at the top so there's a general um, gradation from light to dark that helps weight the bottom. And then I can play with layer styles. I only have this at 11%, but let's take it up to 50%, the, the tobacco stain paper, and then try it maybe on soft light. Pin light. Now, pin light's a little too. Well, I don't know. Seems like a little bit too much of that yellow is leaking through. So, so many options we have. You just have to be kind of confident with your own taste. I like how soft light warms it up. And it helps get rid of kind of that purplish tint. So I'm gonna go with that.
Okay, so now how do we finish this off? Well, now with all of the care given to everything, I can make final adjustments, right? So maybe I want to slightly move my spot illustration, and then maybe I'll want to take my final type and I'll take both my black layer and my color layer and move that slightly to go with it. So these are just layout decisions, right? You don't need to be governed by your initial sketch. And then if there's changes I want to make overall, like all the kind of texture effects and things I did for the text, Maybe I want to do those to my spot illustration. But instead of going in and doing all the color overlays and the, the noise fills, maybe I can kind of treat it like I treated the, um, the background here. So I'm going to save this work and then go back to my spot illustration and try to improve it. Right? It's a good time to improve it. Give it a little bit more texture now that I know that the poster it's going to be on. And I don't want it to just look like, like digital color. Now for that, I can rely on some printing techniques, right? That aren't digital, like using halftone dots and maybe overlaying some of that texture onto the digital artwork, doing kind of a combination like we see here to give you, me more of that like hand done retro feel. And ultimately, if I go to my assignment seven, submission, I wanna just keep pushing it. Now that I know I have my type done and I know the poster it's gonna go into. So let's make it the best spot illustration we can. You know, that's not so rushed. I think mine's up here somewhere. So that is where I ended up. But let's go back to assignment seven. This is why we want to save things as PSD files, right? We're going to open it in photo P. So I've saved this. I'm going to confirm that it's saved in my downloads. There it is coming in with that background. So then I'm safe to close it. And now work on improving my spot illustration, if you have time. And we do have time today. And this is where I get to show you some of these, these finishing techniques. Now, I've already been playing with it a little bit, but this is where I was when I ended, right? So the easiest way, I'll go ahead and delete this. Uh, the easiest way to add kind of complexity to this is not to go through all your different color, color options and then change them, right? You can try that, but ultimately it's not as controllable as for, for the hand done texture features as I'm gonna show you. Like I could go to my gradient overlay and I could try setting it on dissolve and giving it that kind of texture, but then I might lose some of the other things I liked from it. I can make a duplicate of everything and then put that as a layer on top. I mean, there's just so many ways to work with it. But one of the most effective is like when we were finishing off our landscapes, we just want a texture fill. 
So if we just do a kind of a gritty retro um, vintage, all of we can find textures. And then the same way as you would for a poster, right? This says royalty free, but let's see. We can overlay that texture. I like doing this with image searches because they're just so random. It just introduces some chaos into it, which I like. Okay, another way is specifically downloading and finding textures. So I have this file that I keep of ink stamp textures that are actually all um, vector files when you get right down to it. And all they are is from, from scanning different um, printmaking stamps of paper rolled with ink with different dryness and different thicknesses. And so you just get the texture of the ink on there, much like you see here with, with the wood and the, the paint. So if I kind of combine those two, I can get some pretty nice textures on top of my illustration so that it can look a little bit more handmade, right? And then I might also wanna add something to my illustration at this point. I think I wanna add some dripping blood. So this is just where you have fun and you finish it off. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna add the dripping blood first. To do that, I'm gonna add some height to the canvas size. Go ahead and make it nine inches tall. Go ahead and unlock the blank white and then fill that in fully. But not with gray. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I can leave it gray for now. Lock it. I'm going to do the blood as a color hold, so just on top of everything. And I'm just going to draw it in with the lasso. Kind of loosely. Then I'm going to say edit fill with a custom color. I'm going to pick the color, pick just a standard red. Right. And then, just to show you how we can kind of draw and create just in the computer, I can move it, I can hit Control T, and I can taper it, warp it. These are just pixels for me to work with now. I want it right along the blade, just like my color hold highlight. Right. And then I can soften it. I'm going to soften the drop. And then just because I did create it with the lasso, I'm going to go ahead and set a feather of three pixels. Use the magic wand to select the space around it, which will feather that selection. Then I'm going to delete, bite into it a little bit. And that softened it a little bit. If I want to soften it more, I can go to Gaussian Blur. 